the Catholic Church is a corrupt machine. He was still the Pope. He preserved the teachings of the church. You guys are making a mistake. Very dedicated to this church. If he says there's no hell, well, you better believe it. You are leading souls to hell. That's not what the church was about. How dare you? How dare you? You're wrong. Nothing to see, nothing to talk about. We're all good. So there's quite a lot of these, you know, Catholic traditional media outlets. Yeah, a lot of them. And they each rake in hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, they've got websites, they've got subscribers, they've got Patreon channels, YouTube channels. They're very popular. Yep. And they're spitting a lot of rubbish. Okay, let's just get to the heart of the matter. They're spitting a lot of rubbish. You know what I've got a contention with? The fact that they are constantly, constantly exposing what they call the Catholic Church. Yeah. Constantly exposing it. Constantly bagging her. Constantly exposing her corruption, her dirt, her filth, her scandals. You're not saying that, they're saying that. They're saying that. <clears throat> yeah. They're saying, oh, look at this scan, look at that scan, look at what this priest has covered up, look at what this bishop is doing. Look at what the Pope did. Recognize and resist, resist, we've got to resist all this stuff, right? They're doing a huge disservice, disservice to salvation of soul because what essentially they're saying is the catholic church is a corrupt machine that then in the mind of the listeners those who had potential to convert to catholicism becomes a pointless exercise doesn't it because yeah. because they're sitting back watching all of this filth and they're saying to themselves well i'm just not going to i'm going to be part of it Right. Why am I going to be part of any of this? And yet, they carry on. Story after story, expose after expose. Corruption story after corruption story. It's as though the church that Jesus Christ established is, a, is an actual filthy rag. That's what they're calling her. This is a very, very serious offense. Well, it's a heresy in the least, and maybe even blasphemy. And that's the problem. And I've seen a lot of people, you were saying, uh, that there are people out there that don't want to know if they, they don't want to come into the church because of what they see it, it doing. Well, I've seen a lot of those people, and uh, they're very confused. Some of them have made the move, for example, from Protestantism to Catholicism, and they don't know whether they should stay in the church because the church is so corrupt. Uh, on the one hand, these people in the pseudo trad community, I call them pseudo trad, uh, when they criticize the church, uh, they are right if they're criticizing the hierarchy, but they're not criticizing the hierarchy. They always talk about the church, the church is corrupt, or the church is doing it, or it's not the church, the church mm. doesn't do that. It's the yeah. hierarchy, it's the bishops, it's the cardinals. There's a dead end to all of what they're talking about. It's a complete dead end. For those prospects who would convert to Catholicism, who are taking an interest, finding their way to these sort of media channels, they're creating a complete circular dead end where essentially they're saying the, the state of the church is absolutely awful. Right? Yeah. So that automatically translates into, I don't want to be a part of that because of how awful it is. But there's also another group which is badly affected and that's the group that would have left this entity, this institution, which is a corrupt institution, were it not for or but for these people that are telling them, look, the church is really bad, it's really horrible and it's uh, dirty and disgusting, but we're gonna stay in the church and we're gonna fight and resist. Well, and they're so passionate about remaining there. No way, we're not leaving. You're not gonna kick me out of my church. And that is essentially the effects of all of what they, they're talking about is remain here despite this, remain. The only thing they're doing, they're remaining in the buildings of the a former, the former church. The church yeah. is still around. Yeah. The church exists, it's just that the 
number of laity and the faithful is much lower now. Much, much lower now than it used to be. Now most of the people in the Novus Ordo Church are heretics. Yeah. What these people say is that, no, 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 this is the church. If you leave, because I'm in this building, if I leave this building, I'll become a schismatic. And that's completely <laughs> a very physical, non-supernatural way of looking at it. I think it's just attributing the, the physical uh, dress of the church and saying, you've got to stay in that. You've got to stay in the physical yeah. The, the, the physical, the manifest physical church. If you're not part of the physical manifest church, then you're no, no, no longer Catholic. Whereas what they don't understand is remaining in the church is remaining true to the doctrinal teachings of the church. It's an emotional reaction. It's it, Exactly. That's it's how they're seeing it. It's nostalgia. <clears throat> and that's one of the problems with the West, with the Western decivilization, as I like to call it nowadays. Yeah. Emotion rules the day. It's nothing is any based on logic and truth anymore. It's about emotion. Yeah. If I leave this church, I'll be leaving the uh, the uh, the cathedral that I'm part of, the parish that I'm part of. Therefore, I'll be leaving the actual church, and that's schism uh, schismatic. It doesn't matter what they teach. I'm just going to stay in send my children to the school that belongs to this so-called church yeah. and I will be okay as long as I'm here I'll be resisting it though yeah that's not what the church was about no, no, you're right. not staying in the church to resist the Pope if it's if he is the true Pope you don't resist him in the uh, arena of faith morals and dogma you just don't no, in fact you, it's a sin to resist the Pope it is a sin Pope Leo the 13th we've talked about it you can't and just make an exception and say, suddenly resisting the Pope is okay because we think this Pope is teaching some errors. They use some historical examples of people resisting an immoral Pope, but not a heretical or a her heresy teaching Pope. And they say, see how they stayed in the church. Yes, but the guy was still a Pope. Yeah. Even if he uh, committed adultery, he was still the Pope. He preserved the teachings of the church. You guys are making a mistake in immorality, individual immorality of a Pope, and the actual heresy of a person claiming to be Pope. Well, they'll bag out the, the their church, right? They'll bag it out. All of the all of the the filth, as I was talking about before, all of the corruption, all of the sexual abuse, the cover-ups, all of that. They'll they'll bag it out, constantly reporting it daily. But then never ever say the word heresy. If you say the word heresy, that's when you're out of line. You are out of line. So how do you reconcile that? You know, I mean, I think one of them was starting to talk recently about heresy. He was starting to make motions that this is heresy. What we are hearing is heresy. And a whole heap of others just jumped on that. They said, how dare you? How dare you? You're wrong. This is terrible what you're doing. You are leading souls to hell by using the word heresy because you're essentially leaving the church. Uh, you know, and they'll they'll find the the most bizarre ways to explain some of the things that are actually going on in this hierarchy. For example, you know the the Pachamama fiasco, where you know I heard one of them explain that away as though it was some some no no the Pope wasn't there was no worshiping of any idols going on. It was really just the Pope. Uh, blessing the the people of uh, Pachamama, the Amazonians. <laughs> he was blessing them and, and really blessing their their what they what they what they found, what they had reverence again uh, for. He was blessing that, mm. and so that's a very Catholic thing. We've had popes bless other things like that previously. You know, just explaining it away as though it's another another day in the office. Mm. Business as usual here. Nothing nothing to see. Nothing to see. Nothing to talk about. We're all good. If I'm not mistaken. The issue about this particular person who used the word heresy, and that is itself heretical apparently to these people. If you use the word heresy, you're a heretic, mm. apparently. So I think it was in relation to the communion of saints. There was a Protestant-like uh, uh, proclamation from uh, Bergoglio, the uh, uh, the humble, to the effect that. You can never lose your communion of saints. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you do. Even no. if you're a great atheist and all that sort of thing. You, you can never not, lose it. 
It's like those Protestants. Protestant 101. Yeah. It's Once like, saved, always saved. Borgoglio was saying that y you can't lose it. And of course, that's heresy. It's teaching heresy. But he's obstinate in what he's teaching. And yeah. he's teaching heresy. Therefore, he cannot be the Pope. And so when you point out the logic of it, they go all emotional. And that's what I was saying. The decivilization of the West. Men are emotional now. They're like women. Uh, just have a look at this Ukraine war, the way that they've treated it, uh, the emotional outbursts about it have been uh, essentially unbelievable. And you can see that in all spheres of life, including in Noah's Ordo sphere of life. Yeah. When you when you say that this is this guy is not the Pope, they bark at you. Yeah. And when you provide reasons for it, they bark at you some more. It's no different than the Antifa, you know, they say, oh, we're not lefties and we're not this and that. But you're all in a way, and you're liberal, you know, you've come down from your uh, 1950s and 60s and 1940s liberalism to a new, new liberal sort of a system. And you, you've you immersed yourself in the system. You're part of the discourse. And that's why you act emotionally when people point out to you that this cannot be the church. And if it is the church, then you have to obey. If he says there's no hell, well, you better believe it. There's no hell. If he says you don't proselytize because proselytism is um, nonsense, a sol solemn nonsense, then you better believe it. If Vatican II teaches that religious liberty is a good thing, then you better believe it. Let the Hindus have their own religion. The whole point of religious liberty was to ensure that the Catholic Church had no say whatsoever in policy because every other religion was free to exercise their liberty. That's why they made Catholicism equal to every other religion and they ensured that Catholics had nothing, they could do nothing in relation to uh, uh, public policy, in relation to uh, public sin, in relation to uh, adultery in relation to things like pornography and essentially that's why we're here and so these people quite beside you know they say oh we're counterculture we're fighting the culture no you're not counterculture you're actually with the culture except on a you, you'll get there slower you'll get to that point where the culture is in a more slow fashion and that's what we're seeing and that's what these people do and the number one sin that they're committing is not just not letting new converts into the true catholic church they're also keeping the people that ought to leave this church so that their souls can be saved yeah. or to leave the sect so that their souls can be saved no, they keep them there. they're keeping them there they do a very they're good keeping job them in this false church yeah they're keeping them in this new Anglicanism, in this new divorced church, and that's their job. And of course, when you look at it from a supernatural kind of a way, all you can say is that the devil is involved in this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, it's a strategy straight out of the pits of hell, and it's a very effective strategy because it's working. We can see it working. I mean, the, the question is, what's the breaking point? What does this hierarchy of this Norvus Auto sect need to do to have these people sit up, take notice, and say, "Okay, now this is this is it. This is serious now. This is where we're at. Okay, this this cannot this cannot be the Catholic Church. I'm I'm flipping over. I am crossing that threshold. This isn't the Catholic. What what will it take for that to happen? Because no, it nothing. sounds like it sounds yeah. like everything that could possibly happen to have that realization make, make itself yeah. manifest to you has already happened. I mean, how can you?" How can you have any worse than idol worship at the Vatican, in the grounds of the Vatican? What will it take? What they also say is that if I leave this, if I leave the church, I have left the church and therefore I'm not part of the same club, I'm not going to get the same audience, I'm not going to get the same no. money from what I do, yeah. people will not buy my books, so it doesn't... My point is that this whole thing is supernatural, uh, but they take it in a physical way. They don't understand that this new Novus Ordo Church is really another kind of Anglicanism mm. which they have embraced and they, they can't let go of it. They just can't let go of it. It's the same. There's really not much of a difference between what's going on here and what went on in England um, when um, essentially the Pope was done away with. There was no more Pope. 
and the king of England was the Pope and so everybody all the bishops turned they confiscated expropriated the church property and uh, expropriated the faithful and the laity and made them their own and there were some it's a minute number of Catholics who fought and died thousands of died of them died for what was the true church and so there isn't much difference between this one and that one except that as some people say at least these earlier heretics and schismatics and people who were leaving the church had the decency of actually leaving the church yeah whereas the modernists of Vatican II were yeah. indecent people and they didn't leave the buildings of the church. No, they just took over. They just, they just took over the yeah. buildings of the church and created their own church, their own sect. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're here. And these people, these pseudo trads because of their emotional attachment to some building, they can't figure that out. Yeah. It's emotional. It it's is. not it's emotional and it's physical it's not supernatural whereas I'm saying it is supernatural you have to look behind the veil you have to uncover the veil it's just like the book of the apocalypse why is it called the uncovering it's because it uncovers the fact that there's a massive deception going on about this Vatican II church of the great apostasy and that's what it is yeah Oh, glory to God in the highest. He's behind it all. His will, not ours. Amen. Amen.